So let's now look at migrating scripts to script modules. In many cases, you may have one or even more files of function definitions. Those typically are PS1 files somewhere in a common folder somewhere on your system. Now, you can invoke those in your profile. You can invoke those on demand via dot sourcing. And as I said earlier, those function definitions could actually be in your profile and you effectively define them every time you start PowerShell. Now, converting those are actually pretty straightforward. Converting them into a module, you simply take the PS1 file and create a file called whatever the module name is, .psm1 file. Simply rename it. If the function definitions were actually in your profile, you might want to move those into a similarly named PSM1 file. Once we have the file, we store that in the module name folder underneath our our personal module, so dollar mod slash module name slash whatever your PSM1 file is. Once we've done that conversion, you can simply load the module as normal. With PowerShell v3, you can just call the function, and as long as it is in one of those standard module folders, PowerShell will load the module and call the function. Alternatively, you can import the module manually, something you might do, for example, in a longer script. Now let's look at a really simple script that we can convert to a module. So we start out with a very simple script, m2.ps1. It's stored in our foo folder on our C drive. It has really two main lines after the comment. We have a write host, which will write a little message when we load the module. And it has a function definition, get greeting, which when you call the get greeting function, returns the string hello world. Now, typically, that would be dot source to get that function into your run space. And that could be invoked in a profile or as needed. And there's your very simple script with which contains a function definition. Now, convert that into a module is very simple. We make a small change to the, the, the comment there. We change the right host to loading module M2. And then the function definition is left as it is. Now, with PowerShell v3, with that module in place, we can so simply call the getGreeting uh, function and PowerShell will load the module and off we go. If we were using PowerShell v2, of course, you'd need to import the module in advance. Now, in terms of loading script modules, we mentioned this earlier in the course. You can manually use the import module and specify the module name to import a module. For example, import module M2. And this is probably best practice. I, I always try and explicitly load and import the modules uh, that I'm going to use, particularly in production scripts. Now, of course, if it is V3 and if the module is in standard module folders, the auto loading logic can kick in and PowerShell can auto load the functions as necessary. Now, if I store my module in some other folder, which might be the case during development, I recommend not doing that for production. Then on the import module command, just specify the full path, either to the folder containing the module or to the PSM1 file itself. So for example, import module C somewhere else, modules M2. And that's we're specifying the full path. And alternatively, you can specify the folder. Now, if I do put a module in a non-standard folder, there is no auto loading. As we mentioned earlier, there's two useful parameters to the import module commandlet, verbose, which will have PowerShell tell you what the import module commandlet is doing, and then the force. If the module is currently loaded, using the minus force parameter removes the module and then reloads it, something highly appropriate during development. Now, one small uh, consideration for the AD module, the Active Directory module in Server 2008 and 2000, R2 and 2012 will automatically create an AD drive when you load that module. Now, that takes some time to perform. There's quite a lot of work under the covers that's happening to create that drive. And in some cases, you may never use the drive. So to avoid having that AD drive created when you load the Active Directory module, you can set a variable, ADPS underscore load default drive, set that to zero, and the next time you import the module, no Active Directory 
drive will be created. Let's now take a look at a simple script module in action. So now we're going to take a look at this second demo in this module 2 here. So first of all, I'm going to change directory to a, a, a local folder, e colon backslash foo, where I've stored a little program called m2.ps1. Have a look at it. There it is, 188 bytes. And if I print it out, you can see it's got a, a very simple write host followed by a printing hello world from script. Not a very exciting module, but it will serve our purposes. Now, let's dot source that. So dot slash dot slash m2. And then loading. And you notice the reading, uh, the loading is there. It's, it's being displayed. And now when I look at the function get greeting, I have the function in my function folder. More importantly, notice that when I look at this function, I don't have a module name. That's because there was no module name that this function was loaded from. If I call get greeting, you notice I get the hello world from the script file. Okay, so now, because there's no easy way to get rid of this, what I'm going to do is remove the function and then have another look to see if that function is. Of course, it doesn't. Let's clear the screen. And let's call get greeting. Oh, look at this. We haven't done anything. And hello world from M2 module. Well, that's because if we go over to the M2 module in the normal spot. I see I have an M2.psm1 file. So we just demonstrated auto loading at work there. As you can see, the M2.psm1 file just has a uh, couple of comments followed by a get greeting hello world from the M2 module, which is what we saw when we called get greeting a moment ago. Try it again, and sure enough, there we have it. Now, if I import the module again using both the force and verbose, notice the first verbose statement is removing the imported get greeting function. So, in effect, the minus force switch tells us to unload the module and then reload it, which is exactly what just happened. If I have a look at get command get greeting, you'll see in this case now the get greeting function actually comes from the module name M2, which is where we loaded it from. If I go off and get module M2, you can see we have just the one exported command. And as you noticed, there was no export definition, so we automatically see every function defined in that module exported and then re-imported by PowerShell. I can now remove the module. That's pretty straightforward. And I look at the function again, you notice now I have, I have the get greeting functions gone. 